لكل حكاية بطل ولكل إنجاز أبطال ولكل بطولة طريق وفي مؤتمر دبي الرياضي الدولي عضو مبادرات محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم العالمية نلتقي هذا العام تحت شعار الطريق إلى البطولات لنستعرض مع نخبة المختصين وأصحاب التجارب الاحترافية الأكثر نجاحا كيفية تكوين فريق بطل قادر على مواجهة كل التحديات واعتلاء منصات التتويج في أكبر البطولات كما نستعرض واقع اكتشاف واستقطاب الموهوبين وآفاق نمو وتطور هذا القطاع المهم كما سنشهد معا تكريم الفائزين في النسخة الثالثة عشر من جوائز دبي جلوب سوكر من نجوم اللعب والتدريب والإدارة والتحكيم وجميع التخصصات في كرة القدم العالمية تم خلال النسخ الستة عشر الماضية من مؤتمر دبي الرياضي الدولي المنصة العالمية لتطوير كرة القدم استعراض العديد من المواضيع التي تتعلق بصناعة مستقبل أفضل لكرة القدم وتواجد معنا في كل عام متحدثون وضيوف من نخبة قيادات كرة القدم العالمية وصناع القرار فيها وأنجح اللاعبين والمدربين حيث يمثل اللقاء السنوي في دبي فرصة للاحتفال بنجاحات كرة القدم ومكانتها المتنامية في العالم مما تمثله من قمة الشغف للشعوب كما يمثل هذا الحدث فرصة لبحث آفاق التطور والاستفادة الأمثل للموارد وتعزيز دور كرة القدم في الاقتصاد وإطلاق المبادرات التي تعزز مكانة الرياضة في تمكين الشعوب وإسعادها Your Excellency Matar Attayer, Vice Chairman of the Dubai Sports Council, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Masal Khair, and a very warm welcome to the 17th Annual Dubai International Sport Conference and the 13th Annual Dubai Globe Soccer Awards. My name is Natalie Mamu, and I am honored to be once again hosting this beautiful ceremony alongside you, Tom. Well, what an honor it is for me as well to be hosting alongside you at this evening. Great to have you back here, Natalie. Thank you so much indeed. And let's get things underway. Under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai. And under the guidance of His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of Dubai's Executive Council, we welcome the world to the United Arab Emirates with open arms. Organized by the Dubai Sports Council annually since 2006 in the presence of His Excellency Matar Attayir, Vice Chairman of the Dubai Sports Council, here with us tonight, the Dubai International Sports Conference, which is a member of the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Global Initiative, has delivered debate around various topics surrounding the football world. It's been unpacked and dissected by the most respected names in the game, and this year is no different. Yes, indeed, and time to kick things off with a star-studded conference. So, please do take your seats as we get ready to welcome onto the stage some of the greats of the game. But before we do that, uh, to host the proceedings, one of the greats of broadcasting, please welcome onto the stage from CNN, Becky Anderson. And joining Becky here on stage, none other 
than World Cup winner Sergio Ramos. And last but certainly not least, the legend is in the room. Please make some noise for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> I'm not going to get up again. <laughs> Good to be here. Good to have you guys with me on the stage. Excellencies, ladies. And gentlemen, friends, Mo Salah, I see you there in the front row. Viewers around the world, terrific to be with you all tonight. With me, two giants of the game, neither of whom need any further introductions. Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Sergio Ramos, welcome to Dubai, both of you, and to the Globe Soccer Awards. Both looking very dapper tonight, off the pitch which uh, befits what is this very elegant event. Um, Sergio, by the way, will be speaking in Spanish, as I understand okay. it. So for those of you in the room, there are headsets, if you'd like to use those for translation. For our viewers around the world listening in, you will get the, uh, the translation simultaneously. Right, let's kick this off. We're used to seeing both of you on the pitch, facing off against each other. Uh, over the years, playing for Barcelona and for Real Madrid, respectively. Let me start with you, Zlatan. What are your memories of playing against one of the greatest defenders in the world? Uh, I have good memories because he always made it tough for me. Obviously, he's an aggressive defender, player, and uh, once you get those situations, for me personally, I enjoy because I feel alive. So he brings the best out of you and you just have to be on your toes. And uh, I enjoy the game. So tough duels. It sounds as if you're a bit tricky, Sergio. What are your memories of playing against one of the best strikers in the world? <laughs> bueno, eh, buenas noches. Creo que he tenido grandes recuerdos con, con los mejores jugadores, ¿no? Yo creo que con Zlatan hemos tenido algún que otro capítulo, pero siempre... Good night to everyone. Siempre un abrazo, que I have had one of the best times playing against uno de los grandes, uh, one of the best strikers de, de de, in, the, de in the history of Tenemos this game. Aquí, Salah, Gran Rooney, uh, Salah. que han marcado <laughs> un nivel y una etapa muy importante a nivel... These players have marked an amazing time in the history of football, and they are the history of football. You're both considered greats of the game. Um, tonight, we want to talk about how you develop talent, how you mentor talent, and your journeys through the game. Um, as young players, what sort of challenges did you face in your journey to becoming stars? And how did you overcome those challenges? Lassa, let me start with you. I mean, when you play with champions, once you're young, you, you learn and you teach from them because they are good examples and they are the examples that lead the way for you. And you come there as a young guy, you have only, only to learn and you bring all this experience with you, even from the coaches, not only from the, from the players and then also from the club, depending on which club you are. And, uh, and then you grow as a player. The more you play, the more experience you get. And I mean, a face now where I just give back. I have big responsibility in a different way. So I play with probably one of the youngest team in, the, in Europe. And uh, obviously, you have to be a leader and a role model for them. So it's all about giving back, being an example, and, and put pressure on these young guys. So you make them run. <laughs> I think it's fair to say, with the greatest of respect, this is a very young AC Milan team. I think between the ages of 19 and 23, yeah, I'm, I'm which I think doubles the average age with you on the pitch, right? I'm not on the list yet, so <laughs> it's probably the youngest team. Tell, tell me about your journey, Sergio. Bueno, mi, yo creo que la mentalidad del futbolista va cambiando en función de, de cuando va adquiriendo más experiencia, más años. 
Al principio, uh, through the experience. Con la de ser el mejor. Everybody plays with the mentality to become the best. You have to believe in yourself. You never know whether you are going to make it or not. But your mentality makes you reach your result. When the time passes by, you keep on achieving your results. And as, as said by Zalatan, you have, to, you have to be an example from the beginning. You have to fight with humility. Uh, maybe uh, the others don't have the same mentality, but you have to keep maintain the same mentality and be an example for the younger generation by putting a lot of work, a lot of effort into the game. the two of you, particularly recently, I think we'll have noticed the way that you very much play a part in directing that team. And I just want to dig down a little deeper. You said, you know, it's really important to work as a team. You've obviously been inspired by people that you played with uh, when you were growing up. What does it mean for you guys now to be, let's call you veterans of the game with these youngsters? How do you go about motivating them? Zlatan. I think it's very important because well, once the new generation comes up, they have to look up to somebody, they have to follow somebody, but then it depends on which example they follow. And uh, you don't, you're not being an example just, just by talking. You have to be an example also by showing, because players can talk a lot, but if they don't show, it becomes, there's no credibility. So I think in my position now is important just to give back. I have nothing to bring in because I did everything I could and I enjoyed the game in a different way. I didn't lose the passion for what I do. So being an example in the right way. So I'm just being myself and try to do what I'm able to do. Sergio, how has the game changed over the years you've been playing? It certainly seems, feels a lot more physical. The youngsters in the game now are going to have to be super fit. I mean, Clearly, you guys have to retain your fitness as well. I know you've been injured of late. More. Uh, actually, let me ask you, how are you? How's it going? I'm, I'm sharp. <laughs> sharp as a knife. <laughs> when are you going to be back? Why, you don't look, I don't look good? No, you look great. <laughs> I'm, just, uh... <laughs> I'm not going to tell the lie. No, you no, look I'm great. sharp. I'm sharp. <laughs> but you're well. Was I look sharp or no? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it is, it's, 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 it's a game that's developing, isn't it? How has it changed since you've been in it? Bueno, yo creo que el fútbol ha cambiado muchísimo, ha evolucionado, creo que se ha igualado, sobre todo a nivel físico, ¿no? Creo que antes el talento se imponía con una diferencia muy destacable. Talent used to be the biggest difference, but today, nombres, bueno, final, que, que el nivel del fútbol haya subido y que cualquier jugador pues tenga muchas más posibilidades de llegar a esos equipos grandes, ¿no? Increases. Como futbolista, yo creo que, que es bueno para, para todos los amantes del fútbol que el fútbol se haya igualado y que no haya tanta diferencia entre los grandes there equipos is, del pasado. There is now con, equality con in the game. Que se disfruta mucho más. Now it is being enjoyed a lot. Que hay más conocimiento a la Today hora there is a lot of understanding de when it comes to the preparation. Uh, when it comes to preparation, when it comes to the nutrition, the people they have more information and than they used to have before. This very question very close to your heart. I think it's very important because when you come in a certain age, all these young uh, players, the game is getting faster, getting stronger. So you, you, try, you just try to keep up with them by being in shape. And I think the older you get, the slower you get. But if you can keep the strength, you keep up with the, with the level because the thing is when you get older, the, the thing you lose is the pace. So but the intelligence remains and you just keep, keep staying in shape and try to handle these small guys running around you. <laughs> Who are you talking about specifically? All of Which them. Which small guys are you talking I'm, about? I'm probably the tallest player, so all of them. 
<laughs> the audience here is, uh, is packed with leadership from, from Dubai and, and, and those in the sporting, uh, footballing world um, around the globe who are massively interested in attracting and developing talent across the board, particularly in sports. How important is that leadership role and the role of leaders like yourselves on pitch in developing talent? And what is your advice to youngsters at this point? Yo creo que al final el liderazgo es importante, ¿no? Ya lo percibes y lo tienes siempre con un, con un entrenador que es ese líder siempre y esa figura que todo el mundo respeta. Pero no puede pasar de la línea una vez que, que el partido empieza, ¿no? Yo creo que el liderazgo es algo que, que se lleva y poco a poco, poco, a poco se va potenciando con el paso de, del tiempo. Para mí hay gente que lo saca y otros que no, pero creo que la figura de, del líder dentro del campo es muy importante, no solo para los jugadores, sino también para, para el técnico, tener un referente en el que te apoya, que transmite, y creo que el líder, por supuesto, siempre tiene que dar ejemplo. You have to be the example, you have to transmit the leadership. As Zlatan said, leadership is not only speaking, not only talking. You have to do for the best of the team, individually and collectively. And when you do something, the others follow you. Pero dando ejemplo, no hablando. But you have to be leadership in the game, not just speaking by big money investors. So what's been your experience of how significant investment can be in the club and the impact it has on a club, its players, particularly the young talent and the game as a whole, Zlatan? I think, I think new money brings new opportunities. It makes different things possible. So. It doesn't make things stand still, it makes it develop. So obviously the young players that becomes good in an early age, it's difficult to keep them for some clubs and for some other clubs it's easy to get them. So it's like a domino effect, everything goes around. So I just see it as positive and uh, as long as the game gets better and, and bigger because in the end we just want to play the game and enjoy the game. So. And then, obviously, the interest gets bigger and bigger. And when the interest gets bigger, the economy gets bigger. So, what's been your experience of playing for PSG? Bueno, yo pienso un poco similar. Yo creo que al final los los jugadores, los grandes jugadores del mundo, tienen que acabar en los grandes equipos del mundo. Yo creo que todos sacan beneficio en ese sentido. Cuando son clubes con menos nombres, donde sale cualquier tipo de estrella, yo creo que los chavales crecen con la mentalidad de jugar en los grandes clubes. Pero es una transición donde tanto el equipo pequeño como el equipo grande, eh, respetando obviamente las diferencias, se benefician well tanto club. de una manera como They de otra. Entonces, yo creo que para todos esos equipos humildes que trabajan con I una filosofía de, de crecer, siempre tienen en mente pues, jugar en los, en los grandes clubes. Y, y yo creo que la formación eh, no se debe de perder y la mentalidad y siempre ponerte una gran meta de, de acabar jugando en un the equipo grande. The mentality Yo creo que, que es muy positivo para, para tener club. una motivación. Y esta es la motivación más grande. Sí, porque los críticos dicen, o seguramente van a decir, que los grandes propietarios, los billonarios, con los bolsillos de bolsillos, están crowdizando a los equipos sin el mismo clave financiero. ¿A lo que dices, Zlatan? No entendí la pregunta. So the, the, the idea being that the, the, the wealth of money in the game is sort of crowding out the smaller clubs. We've been talking about the investment and the impact it can have, certainly on nurturing young talent. What do you say to those critics? I mean, it means they have to work more and, uh, and bring, bring more experienced players to develop their players from the, from the youth. So not everybody will have the possibility to get the players like Ramos, like PSG did. So. But when you have a team like PSG, they make a dream team together. Then you need the structure, you need all the rest, because not everything doesn't happen in 48 hours. It takes time, like every other club. Obviously, the other clubs have more experience, more tradition, so they're more in front of those things. But in the end, it's all about developing the, the players. So the young clubs that doesn't have the possibilities, like the rich clubs, they have to work in a different way, or maybe in a smarter way. But it doesn't mean because you have a rich club, you work in a smart way. 
It's all about the experience. And when it comes to experience, there is no value how much it costs because the experience goes above the value. We're just three days away from what is the biggest sporting event that this region has ever seen. It's a watershed moment for this region. And it's traditionally a stage where young or sometimes unknown talent to many people around the world can burst onto the global sphere. So who are you watching during this World Cup? Who should the viewers out there be keeping an eye on? Sergio. Uh, it's difficult to know that a Copa del Mundo, to say a name, I think it's a World Cup. I think there's always a una selección que da la sorpresa, que es la revelación, por, 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 no sé si por, por ley o de vida o por otras circunstancias, pero norms, siempre una, una selección rules. sorpresa que siempre llega mejor que otra. A But priori yo creo que la favoritas, por supuesto, siempre iría con España, que es mi país, yo, y creo que puede ser un, un gran papel a pesar it's, it's de llevar una, team, una selección también muy joven. And Francia it creo has que es la actual campeona del mundo team. y puede desempeñar also France, eh, pues, it has a good defender team, el trono de una manera and it can defend eh, bastante considerable. Own, uh, y las dos quizás más fuertes que, que puedo ver, tanto Brasil como Argentina. And obviously I would hambre, also add up Brazil and de, de Argentina. Mm. They have the potential muy, muy to be the también por las circunstancias en, la, en las fechas que que se van a dar. This is going to be a really special World eh, Cup because of these dates and, y, and depending upon the, the conditions and the situations in which we encounter, los, it could be really special. En a final de eh, the todos teams los they are coming up in, rodado, in, in a moment in the, the season where, de, de um, de where we are in the middle of the, 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 we are in the, middle of the season para esta Copa del Mundo. And uh, for that, uh, they need a lot of hard work for the this. World Cup, it's about to enjoy. Probably you watch every game, difficult to miss. And uh, I hope the fans will enjoy it, which I'm pretty sure they will. And then who I be, will be watching, I don't know. Probably I'll be watching myself training, so. <laughs> What's your best World Cup memory? Both of you, Zlatan. <laughs> According with me, I don't have great <laughs> memories because I didn't score in the World Cup yet. So <laughs> that question is for him because he enjoyed the real trophy. So if I have to say where I come from, Sweden, World Cup US, I think it was when they came in the third place. So that was a nice moment. Yeah. I come from a small country. He comes from a big country. So yeah. he has better opportunities. I was there watching you in 1994. Go on, tell me. Sergio, right. best memories. Lata no es excusa. Bueno, inevitablemente, mi mejor recuerdo fue Sudáfrica. Um, 2010. Uh, it is going to be South Africa 2010. In general, the Mundial 2006 with Germany, we created the philosophy of, of the game, a team, 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 a a lot of players from Madrid. They have had lived a lot of moments in their clubs, and it was a moment to unite and make a team, make a great team, and then obviously, you know, the best memory is going to be this goal from Iniesta. Despite having problems in the past, we knew how to overcome those. El foco en, and en we, ganar, we, ¿no? we had the focus to win it, and poco, ¿no? the goal of, que, que the goal of Iniesta, it, it created a lot of joy, de, de and I wish that we could relive these moments once again. I've got the two of you here, you are, as I described you, you know, a couple of the greats of the game, um, unbelievable footballers, alongside a couple of greats who are playing, Messi, and Ronaldo. This could well be their last World Cup. These are two legends of the game, of course. What are your memories of them? And what will their legacy in the game be? Sergio. Mi legado. Yo creo que mi legado todavía no ha terminado. Creo que me quedan 
algunos años por lo menos para empatar a, a Zlatan My que eran cuatro. Um, y yo creo que esa es la, la mentalidad con I la que me levanto día a día years, mantener la, ilus uh, la ilusión like y did. el hambre por ganar y el legado yo creo que que uno lo va dejando prácticamente sin hablar. El legado es el que queda, uh, legacy, eh, tu dedicación, tu profesionalidad, tu speaking. esfuerzo. Eh, yo creo que eso, la gente effort. que te conoce y que ha pasado The día tras día contigo, you, eh, creo que saben ¿no? lo que cuesta mantenerte day. tantos años en, en la élite y no es fruto de, de la casualidad, es fruto de, de tener pasión, so de tener ilusión, I, I dedicación, perseverancia passion, y constancia, ¿no? y resetearte todos los años, empezar de cero y, y tener ese hambre por, por ganar, yo creo que es el secreto y el mejor legado que me gustaría eh, dejar, no dejar, ¿no? poner retos, poner sueños muy altos and y hacer, like ¿no? que no dependa de otro y que, y que vayas a por él. Where, I, where I'm at now, because at 41 years old, if you don't have the passion still, you will not survive, because every morning you wake up, you, you wake up with a lot of pain, you have to do your training, then the recovery. So obviously at 41, you don't recover like the young guys, because everything goes faster, everything goes easier. So I play my game today because of fashion, passion, fashion, passion, so <laughs> also fashion. Looking no? very small. <laughs> so, Without the passion, it's difficult to do the game because that is the first thing you, you do it for. As when you lose the passion, then you lose the self-discipline. Then it's, it's over quick. There will be kids watching this around the world. We've been talking about nurturing talent, and, and, and that's what this um, whole conference is, has been about. There will be kids watching the two of you who aspire to play football like you, who aspire to be... Zlatan Ibrahimovic or uh, Sergio Ramos. Who did you aspire to be as a kid? A mí, realmente, la inspiración que he tenido siempre ha sido de, de jugadores que jugaban arriba, de delanteros. Mi inspiración, uh, my inspiration has, been, otro, has Maldini, always been Fernando uh, players who Era have been um, playing con, uh, con like Ronaldo, Maldini eh, um, and also uh, Claudio Canilla, argentino, uh, eh, like Claudio Canilla, who is Argentinian. These players por supuesto, have been a lot closer to the goal. Fui jugando al fútbol, me and when I used to, no when I used to play, uh, then they <laughs> then they kept, they kept on pushing me back because I was not better than the others. And also my padre. father inspired me because he created me with a unique mentality. Me dio unos valores, he gave me some values de humildad, de, y de 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 res, de of respect, que es el mejor of que respect. Adquirí. Y que siempre, eh, These are the que values pregunta, pues, which I acquired, el, el culpable, ¿no? que, and, que me hizo en este mundo del and he is the, he is the responsible who made igual, me end up in this world of football. En, en Amazing, Slashen. I had different inspirations. For me, it, it was not really a football player. I like Muhammad Ali, because for <laughs> me, you walk like you talk. And that for me was my example. So I tried to bring that on my football field. But if I have to choose a football player, I would choose Ronaldo the Phenomenal because he made me watch football because all these crazy things that was happening and you tried to copy, but it didn't work like that. But my real inspiration was Muhammad Ali. Rumble in the jungle. Where some, were you? Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> You've worked with some of the best coaches in the world. There are a number of fantastic coaches in the audience tonight. Who did you learn most from and why? I mean, we have my Fabio Capello here that... He most certainly is. He made me big, but he broke me also, so... <laughs> one day I was gold, the other day I was zero, so... That was how he built me up. And I remember I came to Juventus first day. Everything was hype, everything was new. I was like, I play in one of the biggest clubs in the world now. I come in the... Like a material room. We didn't really have a breakfast room. So I saw Mr. Capello in there. He was reading this Gazeta dello Sport. 
And I was like a fan because you saw this Gazeta was pink color. And that I, I saw only from distance and I found it very cool. And I was like, buongiorno, mister. He didn't answer me. <laughs> he still read the paper. After 10 minutes, he walked out and I was still in there waiting for my buongiorno. <laughs> Then I understood, this guy is for real, so I cannot joke with him. So he put me in a place in 10 minutes. So this is a different, different kind of approach they have, because I like coaches that they give you, they give you the discipline. They, they're old school, they're really, they're direct and they're honest to you. And then obviously, I had Mourinho that was, I think he's a new version of Capello with modern time. He was something new, something different, and he, he made me even better, and uh, obviously I had other great coaches on the way, in a good way, in a bad way, but it's part of the path you take, so mm. I learned from every coach I had. So. Sergio. It's a question difficult to stay with one coach. It's a difficult question to stay with one coach. Maybe some. Mi carrera, um, eh, who Joaquín Caparrós, fue el primero que, que apostó por mí ¿no? uh, en el Sevilla who, Fútbol Club. Uh, who, who y siendo pequeño me enseñó me a ser grande entre los grandes. Y Luis Aragonés Club, I was really replicó young. un poco lo que ya, lo que ya hizo Joaquín Caparrós ¿no? en la selección española, que era uh, en eh, un Spanish equipo team. Eh, de jugadores más veteranos. Y supo esa transición a la través de jugadores jóvenes. Y también apostó mucho por mí. Y también me enseñó muchísimo. Y a lo largo de mi carrera, de mi carrera, he tenido también a Fabio, he tenido a, a I have had many, Ancelotti, he tenido a Sisu, ¿no? y, y uh, quizás Sisu, he aprendido muchísimo de, de todos maybe, ellos. ¿no? Cada entrenador I, yo creo que, que te enseña algo diferente. Uh, every, y en esa, en esa etapa somos niños pequeños porque vamos absorbiendo manner. And you keep growing, de cada uno, ¿no? y and poco you, a poco, you pues, just keep on catching the best tuya of, of para seguir un poco everyone, el crecimiento tuyo y and this helps you me sorprendió in your si, personal si da, ¿no? que, que and, supo gestionar si también da, un vestuario complicado como era el nuestro de, de Real Madrid de una really manera well, impecable, uh, ya solo cuando the, la gente veía a Zidane, pues ya te causaba ese respeto que requiere también un entrenador, and, pero a veces todos los jugadores que... Eh, dan respect. ese respeto a los jugadores después quizás no son capaces Between de gestionar vestuarios complicados ¿no? yo creo and, que uh, la excelencia la, y una de las medallas se la daría Zidane por la gran etapa que nos hizo one of the vivir en, en el Madrid y una época given, de gloria y de, um, y de Champions he has given, um, great, We've just got a, a couple of minutes left of, just, uh, in conclusion really I just want to get a sense from you guys as you look back on your careers what have you learned most out of the game? Uh, I mean, the game made me who I am. I'm the man who I am today because of my game, because that's something I've been doing for 20 years. And I had opportunity to meet great players, to play against them, to play with them. In my case, I had opportunity to play for many great clubs. I moved around and uh, And I enjoyed the ride, every day of it. And I worked very hard and I think I did my really best to bring the best out of me. So if I could do more, probably. Everybody would say, yes, I could do more. But what I did, I did. So there is no looking back and saying I could do that or change anything because I think every player does the maximum he can do to achieve something. And I had the luck also to win a lot of things. So. Probably the game made me the man I am today. You were competitive as a kid? I was, I was <laughs> very competitive. Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> Why be good when you can be the best? <laughs> good point. Sergio. Bueno, yo cuando miro hacia atrás, eh, uno dice. One wow. says, wow, Qué rápido pasa wow. todo, ¿no? so y me pasa también cuando me encuentro con jugadores it, y hablas con ellos, y también hablas de lo mismo, ¿no? Qué rápido pasa todo, wow, y, so fast the time passes y no te da tiempo realmente a disfrutar todo como, como se merece. Al final, el fútbol va muy, muy rápido en the todos los sentidos, y me hubiese really gustado queda, quedarme a disfrutar cada champion con el tiempo que requiere 
eh, la Copa del Mundo, las Eurocopas, todo lo que he ido ganando, pero el fútbol no tiene memoria y te enseña que tienes que pasar página eh, prácticamente al día siguiente. Y eso es lo que cuando miro atrás eh, pienso y digo, bueno, tiene que haber una etapa para disfrutar de todo esto. Espero que sea eh, en la playa tranquilo mirando well, uh, a, a mis hijos crecer, pero no me quiero ir. This, quiero disfrutar know, muchos años más. The, uh, well, I tell you what, and enjoy and those watching around the, the world, but still those of me here in the room, have enjoyed and continue to enjoy watching you guys on the pitch. Some of the greatest uh, moments of my life has been uh, watching uh, you play, watching the likes of Mo Salah here in the audience play as well. It's an absolute pleasure to have uh, had you in conversation tonight. Put your hands together for Zlatan and Sergio. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellencies, and our distinguished audience, stars from across the globe are here with us in Dubai, and it's an evening where we applaud distinction. Listen, we are live uh, and we are interactive on all social media platforms, so don't forget to use the all-important hashtag. It is, of course, hashtag Globesoccer. Remember, the voting process continues and you can still have a say as to who walks away with the TikTok's Fans Player of the Year Award. We'll be back shortly as the 13th Dubai Globe Soccer Awards will take center stage and together we will discover who will win this year's Globe Soccer Awards. the wrong position, didn't we? Yes. So these are the positions. Uh -huh. Over here? Yeah. For Dorky. Dorky, yeah. So we'll do that and then we will go back. So we're here and then we go to Dorky. Yeah. So Francesca will come on. Because I didn't know we're taking this one from here. I went to the middle. Did you watch that? Did you see that? I went alone to the middle. Did you? Did you see? You were standing there. Playmaker, renowned for his vision, his technique, and his goal-scoring ability. This is someone who shone both at club and international level, representing his nation 
more than 50 times. Regarded as one of his country's finest ever players, one of the best in a generation, and someone who has scaled the loftiest heights in world football. Bringing the ceremonial Globe Soccer Trophy to our awe-inspiring venue is a World Cup winner. A Serie A champion. And the ultimate one club man. Ladies and gentlemen, expertly brought in by our friends at Dubai Police. Please welcome the great Francesco Totti! Francesco, great to have you with us here. I understand you have a few words. <laughs> Buonasera a tutti. Thank you. Um, sono onorato di essere qui. Eh, vorrei ringraziare eh, Dubai Sport e Globe Soccer per questa meravigliosa serata. Siamo pronti e tutto a inizio. Thank you so much, Francesco, for being here with us. Pretty much said that it's an honor for him to be here on such a beautiful evening. He thanked the Dubai Sports Council, the Globe Soccer, and the magnificent city of Dubai and congratulated all the winners. Grazie, Francesco. È un onore averti con noi questa sera. Thank you so much. Grazie, Francesco. Enjoy your evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Francesco Totti. So here we all are. Uh, tonight, Dubai is without a doubt the center of the footballing world. Uh, just scanning around the audience at the moment. From all time greats to rising stars, all have made their way here to our iconic city. Uh, in fact, if you look close enough, we welcome to Dubai FIFA Vice President and CONCACAF President Victor Montagliani. As you've seen, also with us here tonight, on the front row, they've been on stage already, uh, the legend that is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We've got World Cup winners with us here tonight in the form of Romario. And of course, as we've just heard, the legend that is Sergio Ramos. Talking of legends, former England and Manchester United captain Wayne Rooney's with us here tonight. And of course, Lest we forget, the Egyptian king is with us here today, Mohamed Salah. Tom, it's been another magical footballing year. There were records set and records broken as players and teams across the vast football landscape left an indelible mark on this beautiful game. This is an evening where symbols of success are going to be honored for their exploits both on and off the pitch. Indeed it is. It's an evening of celebration. It's an evening of fun. And a huge thanks must go out to our illustrious partners, sponsors and stakeholders uh, who work tirelessly uh, to come together year after year to make the Dubai Globe Soccer Awards the flawless product that it is today. So, a big thank you, first and foremost, to our strategic partner, the Dubai Sports Council, for their ongoing support. Our thanks to Dubai Sports Council. Thanks also to our title sponsors, having a lot of fun with TikTok this evening. Thank you, TikTok. <laughs> Told you. Uh, platinum sponsors this evening are Emirates, Socios, uh, Audi and Al Nabuda Automobiles. And not forgetting our gold sponsors with us here this evening, been powered by Power Horse, Waldorf Astoria, Abu Dhabi Media, Perilate, Still the Sand, uh, and of course Mate Kain W Sushi Samba and the Commercial Bank of Dubai. It's also been a record-breaking year as far as voting is concerned, and fans really made their voices heard. 
Over the course of the past two periods of voting consisting of 20 days, a staggering 33 million votes were cast from 225 countries worldwide, making this one of the most eagerly anticipated ceremonies in our 13-year history. We are breaking records. And this, in this, this year as well, we broke new ground as well as records with the addition of our online awards, where we pay tribute, of course, to the all-important Love them, journalists and influencers. So without further ado, as they say, let's get the ball rolling. We would now like to welcome on stage the Vice Chairman of the Dubai Sports Council, His Excellency Matar El Tayer. Your Excellency, we thank you for being with us here this evening and your patronage of the event. And we begin with the first award of the evening, kicking things off in style. Uh, and where do we start? Well, we start with the individuals responsible for unearthing the uncut footballing gems out there. With keen competition among clubs to find the most promising players, the role of the scout plays an integral part in not just the success of the club, but players as well. We're talking skill, vision, and mentality and character. It takes a special kind of talent to identify these aspects. And it's for this very reason we at Dubai Globe Soccer Awards are paying tribute tonight to the Scout. And your nominees for the Scout of the Year are... Juni Kalafat. Barry Hunter and Jeffrey Moncada. <laughs> Making history as the Globe Soccer Awards first ever Scout of the Year is Juni Kalafat. So spending hours of observation and analysis, they're marrying it perfectly with a little bit of the personal touch. Calafat has been the cornerstone of Real Madrid's recent success. As chief scout, Calafat is tasked with finding Los Blancos, the next generation of great superstars. Congratulations to Judy Calafat. Congratulations then to our first winner. Now, we move on to award number two for you. Uh, and from the cool calm of the scouts, we move to the panic, the adrenaline, uh, adrenaline and the social media being sent into overdrive. You know what I'm talking about, transfer windows are filled with a whole special kind of excitement. It's a time when clubs shore up their squads in order to compete at the very highest level throughout the forthcoming season. With a fee to performance ratio, that all important and telling factor. This year, literally millions were spent, but there was one transfer indeed, which stood out more than all the rest. And the winner of transfer of the year is Erling Haaland from Borussia Dortmund to Manchester City, which was brokered by Rafaela Pimenta. Please welcome on stage, Rafaela Pimenta. So Rafaela was alongside Mino Raiola since the first time they met in Brazil. And today she deserves recognition for the work that they both carried out uh, for so many years. Pimenta was a cornerstone in the success of the late Mino Raiola, a man who was a trailblazer and a game changer in the football world. Congratulations then to Rafaela Pimenta. Rafaela, we'd like to ask you a couple of questions before you go. Definitely the transfer of Erling Haaland was definitely the highlight of the year. Did you expect him to be that successful at such a young age, moving to the biggest league maybe in the world and following the footsteps of his father, who was also a star at Manchester City? Actually, I did. And I'm very happy it is like this and it continues like this. Well, we cannot but remember tonight the late Mino Raiola, who played a big part in shaping your career. What made him a super agent? Mino was first an agent and then Mino. That's, that was his whole life. 
Well, thank you so much and congratulations once again. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the late, great Mino Raiola and let's remember him together. Definitely be fondly remembered. Thank you. Right, onwards with the awards. Uh, next up, well, the role of the agent has become more prevalent uh, as the transfer of players across the footballing world has reached astronomical amounts. That together with brokering commercial deals and the all-important endorsements uh, for the game's biggest stars makes it a very sought-after career these days where only the very toughest will flourish. In 2005, he became an official FIFA agent overseeing the career of his younger brother, Sergio. RR Soccer Management was born and boasts today a stable of superstars. Brought to you by Powerhouse, your agent career award goes to Rene Ramos. So with a long list of clients, which includes his brother Sergio, Brazilian legend Marcello, and of course the Spanish star Yeni Hermoso, Rene Ramos is of, on his way to the very, very top. Congratulations to Rene Ramos. When it comes to acting as a link between the boardroom and the manager, the input of a sporting director is invaluable. These individuals map transfer strategies which help shape the club's philosophy at all levels. Your nominees then for the sporting director of the year are Julian Ward and Michael Edwards of Liverpool. Cristiano Guintoli of Napoli. And AC Milan's Paolo Maldini and Frederic Massara. Brought to you by Audi, your 2022 Sporting Directors of the Year are Paolo Maldini and Frederic Massara of AC Milan. So, with specific roles and good chemistry, Maldini and Massara have been pivotal. Together they found the perfect balance and oversaw the reawakening of a football giant. Congratulations to Messrs Maldini and Massara! Paolo, congratulations. I'm, I mean, your work seems to be, be growing perfectly well with Federic. What makes you guys an amazing team? Uh, thank you, first of all. It's a great honor, a new chapter for me. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of uh, common vision on football, but uh, basically uh, we share the principles of life. So, you know, this is much easier for me to work. Well, you form an amazing team. Congratulations once again to both of you. Thank, thank you. you The success of a youth team is key to a long-term ambition. There are clubs around the world who are not just flourishing at age group level, but have produced top-level talent. And tonight, we pay tribute to the best of the best. So your 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Youth Team of the Year is... Benfica! Now accepting the award on behalf of the Portuguese Giants is, of course, Benfica legend. Rui Manuel Costa. In 2022, Benfica won the UEFA Youth League for the first time in their long history. A 6-0 win over Salzburg in the final was the highlight, uh, capping a remarkable season where they were very, very dominant. Well done to Benfica.
Rui, we'll, we'd like to have a few words with you. Congratulations. Well, Benfica have produced a lot of top talents over the years, but what makes the class of 2022 maybe the most special? First of all, thank you for this award. Thank you for Global Soccer. It's the third time. It's a big honor for us. It's a big honor for Benfica to be here again. Thank you very much for, for this big award for us. So, this is a one more generation, big generation for the club. Uh, of course, now is, uh, is a special for us because it's the first team to won the, the Champions League, the Youth League, and also the Intercontinental Cup. But at the final, is uh, another big generation for the club. Rui, thank you so much for being with us. Congratulations to you and Benfica. Thank you. Don't forget to reuse the hashtag throughout the night, hashtag Globe Soccer Awards. Uh, we are running through those awards quickly. Pizza and truffles await us outside straight after that. So on to the next of our awards. It's been a truly extraordinary year in the world of women's football. The Champions League clash between Barcelona and Wolfsburg drew a record crowd of over 91,000 people, while the transfer of Kira Walsh from Man City to Barcelona was also a record-breaking deal. On the pitch, though, there were some teams who shone brighter than most as an ever-evolving brand of football saw new heights reached. Your nominees for Women's Club of the Year are Barcelona. Olympique Lyonnais. And Real Madrid. So those are your nominees, but who is your winner? Well, the winners of the 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Award Women's Club of the Year are... Olympic Lyonnais. Success in 2021 and 22 saw Lyon win their 15th straight championship, setting a new mark for most titles won altogether. On the continent, the likes of Wolfsburg, Barcelona and PSG emerged as contenders. But back in May, Lyon overcame then holders Barca to reclaim the Champions League crown, a record-extending eighth title. Their legacy is lasting, and Olympic Lyon returned to the summit of the football world in 2022. And accepting the award on behalf of Olympique Lyonnais is Olivier Blanc, General Manager of Olympique Lyon Féminin. Olivier, félicitations, vous avez décroché votre 15e titre en tant que champion de France, votre 8e dans la Ligue des Champions en battant tous les records. Vous êtes sans doute la meilleure équipe féminine en ce moment. Qu'est-ce que cela signifie pour vous en tant que club olympique lyonnais D'abord, merci à, à tous pour cet award qui est prestigieux. Euh, c'est une fierté de, de remporter euh, ce titre et c'est une fierté aussi d'avoir remporté la Champions League une fois de plus cette saison. Nous sommes surtout très contents que le football féminin se développe que des clubs prestigieux comme le Real Madrid, euh, le FC Barcelone et maintenant l'AS Roma de Francesco Totti arrivent au premier plan européen. Donc c'est une fierté pour nous d'être à côté de ces clubs. Merci beaucoup, félicitations encore une fois. Merci. From domestic titles to continental glory, glory, it was a year where club's pursuit of excellence was relentless. While the debate surrounding the best in the world always rumbles, there were clubs who laid down a marker and brought the gold standard. So this award has been brought to you by our friends at Emirates. And your nominees then for Men's Club of the Year are... Liverpool. Manchester City, Real Madrid, and the winners of the 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Men's Club of the Year are Real Madrid. <laughs> Thank you.
Real Madrid ease to La Liga success, however, in Europe is where they again shone brightest. No team became European champions after overcoming such a tough run. PSG were first before Chelsea's reign ended in the quarterfinals. They left it against Man City in the semis before that magical night in France, where victory over Liverpool secured them a 14th Champions League title, confirming their status as the finest in the world. And we are blessed to have former Real Madrid striker, current director of institutional relations, Emilio Butragueno, in attendance to collect the award. Emilio, congratulations. It's been an amazing year for Real Madrid, claiming back the Champions League and the La Liga title. What does it feel to see Real Madrid confirming back their status as kings in the world of football? Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be here. I'm honored to receive this award on behalf of our president and all of us who are part of, of the club. This acknowledgement recognizes an amazing season that will be engraved in the, in the hearts of all our Real Madrid fans and football fans around the world. I would like to share this, of course, with our players, with Carl Ancelotti and his staff, and we would like to express our deepest gratitude to our fans. It would be impossible to achieve our goals without uh, their help. Uh, we all uh, were able to, to live an incredible season, and of course, this award is, is for them as well. Well, thank you. Congratulations once again, and to Real Madrid, best men's club of the year. It's been an amazing year in women's football. There's been the crowning of champions in both Europe and Africa, and players around the world exceeded expectations. Indeed. Now, from goals to assists, saves and tackles, there were some breathtaking performances which really have captivated the world. However, the bar was raised considerably by some more than others. Brought to you by Perle, your nominees for Women's Player of the Year are... Linda Caicedo. Beth Mead and Alexia Putelas. Your 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Award Women's Player of the Year is Alexia Putelas. Unfortunately, Alexia Patelas is not with us tonight to collect her award, but we will make sure the trophy makes its way to Barcelona. Indeed, we will. I'll take it there personally, in fact. Now, before we go on, just a little special mention, if we were made. It goes to the young star, Linda Caicedo, and the nation of Colombia, uh, who certainly got behind their 17-year-old goal-scoring sensation. With over three million votes, uh, Caicedo uh, finished in second spot just behind Butelash, uh, confirming her status as a current star and very much a star of the future. They're the focal point of every transfer and appointment. The first port of call when clubs look to sign a player or manager and the person responsible for the brokering of the deal. Yeah, from uh, contracts to sponsorships uh, and endorsements along the way, being an agent, as we know, is rewarding, but it's also incredibly intensive. This year, billions were spent as clubs across the world bolstered their squads and also their technical teams. But the question we pose is which agents' dealings have been the most successful? Your nominees for Agents of the Year are The duo of Leon Angel and Frank Timboli. George Mendes. 
and Rafaela Pimenta. Brought to you by Waldorf Astoria DIFC, your 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Agent of the Year is George Mendez. So in a year that saw record levels of spending, it was highly successful for George Mendes. In a standout deal, Mendes facilitated Darwin Nunes' 85 million pound club record move from Benfica to Liverpool, again underlining his status as the world's premier agent. George, congratulations once again winning this award. Your name is always involved with the biggest superstars, the biggest transfers. What makes your agency the agency of choice for a lot of the football players? First of all, let me, uh, I would like to thanks to Globe Soccer, to my wife, to all my family, my people from Jesse Foot, and to all, play, all my players and managers. About your question, uh, Working hard every day with the same passion, the same determination, and one, more, one, one very important thing, I like my job. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Still, the awards keep coming, and again, I hope you're enjoying this evening of stars here in Dubai. Big thanks to His Excellency and all the team at Dubai Sports Council for facilitating yet again. Onwards, and next up, our Coaching Career Awards serves to pay tribute to an individual whose tactical genius and management style has kept him on and in the upper echelons of world football. So, with masterful strategy and excellent man management skills, uh, generously sponsored by our friends at, everyone's friends, Sushi Samba, our 2022 Coaching Career Award winner is... Unai Emery! Unai Emery's achievements earned him the nickname of Mr. Europa League. At PSG, a domestic treble was the highlight. While at Arsenal, he handed first opportunities to Bakayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli, paving the way to the future. Having linked up with Villarreal, Emery incredibly won a fourth Europa League title, while he also took them to the Champions League semi-finals last season. Now at the helm of Aston Villa, Emery has the opportunity to revitalize an English giant. Please welcome on stage the four-time Europa League winning coach and current Aston Villa manager, Unai Emery. Unai, congratulations. You've become the master of uh, Europa Leagues with four titles and I'm sure all of them are very special. Is there one that sticks a bit more than the others? Good evening. First, uh, I am very thankful to receive this award. And um, I think the last one, because it was the first uh, trophy we won for Villarreal Real Club, and because we, we won against one of the biggest teams uh, in the world, Manchester United. Well, congratulations on this very well-deserved award, and thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Right, we move on, and from long-term planning to short-term decisions, football executives, uh, well, they are fundamentally responsible for the running of the football club. Uh, they combine various aspects which ultimately lead to the success of the club overall. We here at Dubai Globe Soccer Awards are here to pay tribute to these, well, sometimes unsung heroes. The 2022 Executive of the Year is Real Madrid, Jose Angel Sanchez.
Sanchez has been an ever-present in making Real Madrid the world's dominant force. He oversaw a remarkable increase in revenue and major sporting developments. More than two decades since arriving, Sanchez is as instrumental today as ever. Congratulations to... Congratulations. Well, you've been at the forefront of every Real Madrid success in the past two decades. What's the secret behind keeping Real Madrid at the summit? Well, <clears throat> sorry, there's no secret, to be honest, and there's not a simple answer to that question either. We just make our best to keep excellence and to maintain the, well, the good work of our players and employees. Over the last 20 years, the society has suffered many chances in technology and football industry and, and the game itself. Maybe the secret is adapting to those changes while staying true to the identity of the club. This is the, what we try to do every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Whatever the secret is, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much. Yeah, congratulations, Jose, for that, con for that award this evening. And we now turn our attention to another special juncture of the evening, a special moment, if you like. Uh, those that were tuning in uh, last year, 2021, will know that we at Dubai Globe Soccer Awards immortalize the incredible talents of one of the greatest to have ever graced a football pitch. The Maradona Award pays tribute to the most prolific scorer of the past 12 months, honoring the late great El Pibe de Oro in the most appropriate manner. The leading goal scorer for the year will be the recipient of the 2022 Maradona Award and we will be announcing him early next year. Kylian Mappe and Robert Lewandowski are leading the way as things stand, but who will walk away with the, with the prize? Now, we would like to take this opportunity, I'm sure you'll join me in thanking His Excellency Mata Altair for again gracing us with his presence. Your Excellency, thank you very much indeed. We're going to be taking a break and we'll be back shortly with more from the 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards. But there's still time to vote for the TikTok Fans Player of the Year. And here's how. There's still time to place your vote. The TikTok Fans Player of the Year is being decided now. Eight superstars have been competing on TikTok. Benzema, Messi, De Bruyne, Courtois, Salah, Haaland, Lewandowski and Ronaldo. Choose your winner. Download TikTok. Search Globe Soccer. And vote for your favourite player. The player with the most votes will be TikTok Fans Player of the Year 2022. Voting ends soon. Search Globe Soccer on TikTok to vote. How long is the break? How long is the break? Can I have water? <coughs> you need a nice one on the floor, or are you okay? I'm going to put it on the floor. I'm going to put it on the floor. Is it good? Yeah. You? Yeah, yeah. Nice. I like it. It's pacey. It's cool. It's a bit faster, yeah? Huh? It's faster than it's really cool. <laughs> Do 
you want me to make an announcement on the floor or not? Gav, do you want me to make an announcement on the floor or not? Right. Welcome back to the 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards. The voting is still open for the TikTok Fans Player of the Year, so you can still make your voices heard. Remember, we are interactive on all social media platforms, so please don't forget to use the hashtag Globe Soccer. Indeed, hashtag Globe Soccer. Use the hashtag now. Right, let's move on to the next of our awards here, live from Dubai, Real Madrid once again confirming their status as the finest team in the world. With the tools to succeed both on and off the pitch, uh, the culture of success has been ingrained into everyone associated with Los Blancos. And this would not have been possible without the input of their president and tactical genius of their coach. So brought to you by Socios.com, your 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards President of the Year is Florentino Perez. And sponsored by Silver Sand, your coach of the year is Carlo Ancelotti. And here are your two winners. En primer lugar, quiero transmitir mis felicitaciones a todos los premiados con estos galardones que cada año fortalecen los valores del fútbol y del deporte. Y deciros que para mí es un honor recibir este premio Globe Soccer. Ser presidente del Real Madrid es un gran orgullo, pero también es una enorme responsabilidad, porque este club genera un sentimiento que une a millones de personas en todos los lugares del mundo. Y yo me esfuerzo cada día para que el Real Madrid esté a la altura de su historia. Gracias a los organizadores de esta gran gala y muy especialmente al Dubai Sport Council. Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to receive this award. Uh, this is the second time. The first time was uh, in 2014 when we won the decima, and this time to win the Champions League number 14. It was a fantastic season, an unbelievable season, unforgettable season because uh, uh, we played fantastic game, difficult game against strong team and uh, we were able, don't give up, never, and to fight until the last second. At the end, we, I think we deserve to win. I'm so sorry don't be here today. I would like to thank you everyone for this award and I hope to enjoy the gala. Thank you. We at Globe Soccer broke new ground, praising efforts which transcend far beyond the football pitch. So we teamed up with CNN to bring you the first ever Off the Pitch Award and Becky Anderson caught up with our winner Didier Drogba, an individual who blazed a trail off the field of play. Well, this year, CNN has partnered with Dubai Globe Soccer Awards to launch a new category, the Off the Pitch Award. Now, this recognizes the achievements of an individual club or other soccer organization for their impact on wider society. And joining me now from Abidjan in Ivory Coast is the inaugural recipient of this award, footballing icon Didier Drogba. The Didier Drogba Foundation has raised extensive funds to install essential amenities. And as a World Health Organization Goodwill Ambassador, Didier has promoted the value of sport for youngsters. The head of the WHO described Drogba as a proven game changer, both on and off the pitch. And who could disagree 
with that. Congratulations, Didier Drogba, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, really. Um, I would like to thank uh, Globe Soccer Award in Dubai and CNN for giving me this award. It's, um, it means a lot to me and, and, and to the people working at the foundation. We are working really, really hard to build schools, provide books, access to computers, mobile clinics that travel out to the villages to give um, people access to healthcare. And, and we could give them opportunities to go out and shine in the world with, uh, with the basics and, and, and do great things. Every time we get support, it's um, the people, kids, women who, who benefit the most. So I'm, I'm really proud of it. And uh, thank you for giving me this platform to, to talk about the foundation. From scoring goals for peace, fighting poverty and a crusade against viral diseases, DJ Drogba's work off the pitch definitely makes him a fitting champion. Indeed it does. Right onwards, there's been moments of magic that have truly captured the imagination. We were kept at the edges of our seats as the best of the best delivered the spectacular. But who, people, was the very best of the best? Your nominees for the 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Men's Player of the Year are Kahim Benzema. Erling Haaland and Hamad Salah. Right, it's such a big announcement, we need a big building. In fact, we need one of the biggest. Let's go live, if we can, to the world's tallest building to find out who has won this year's 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Men's Player of the Year. Bonsoir. Merci à tous. Voilà, je suis vraiment content de recevoir ce, ce magnifique trophée. Merci à ceux qui ont voté pour moi. Merci à tout Dubaï. Donc voilà, comme je l'ai dit, je suis déçu de ne pas être avec vous ce soir. Mais euh, pour moi, ce trophée représente beaucoup, énormément. Donc merci aussi à, à mon club, les coéquipiers, car c'est grâce à eux. Merci au Real Madrid. Et euh, j'espère eh ben, à bientôt. Well, Benzema thanked everyone and expressed his happiness for receiving this prestigious award and his disappointment for not being here with us tonight. He thanked all those who voted for him, the city of Dubai, his club Real Madrid, and definitely his teammates, who without them, all this wouldn't have been possible. Yeah, Benzema was without doubt the standout performer for Real Madrid as they won La Liga and claimed a record-extending 14th Champions League crown, uh, scoring 44 times the highest season tally of his illustrious career. Domestically, he scored 27 times as Real won the title easily, but it was in Europe that he produced his best performances, propelling Los Blancos to Champions League glory. Next up, your men's player of the year, France and Real Madrid's goal-scoring machine, Karim Benzema. We now welcome on stage His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Chairman of the Dubai Sports Council, accompanied by His Excellency Matar Al Tayer, to present the next awards. We now pay tribute to a giant of the game, a man who in his capacity as CEO took AC Milan to the summit of the football world. 
Yes, indeed, Natalie. He was responsible for some of the club's most spectacular signings to date. At the helm of the club, AC Milan won the Scudetto eight times and were also five times winners of the Champions League. Ladies and gentlemen, our Executive Career Award winner is... Adriano Galliani. Galliani, congratulations. You've accomplished so much with the career with AC Milan, but what has been the biggest challenge that you faced? Grazie di cuore per questo premio. Sono veramente onorato e complimenti al Dubai Sport Council per tutto lo sforzo che fa per promuovere il calcio nel mondo. È veramente fantastico quello che fate e lo fate attraverso tutte le componenti del calcio. Nei 29 anni, nei 29 trofei che abbiamo vinto con il Milan, con il presidente Berlusconi, nei nostri 31 anni abbiamo cercato di, di fare così anche noi, di promuovere il calcio attraverso non solo le vittorie ma attraverso il bel gioco e adesso dopo i 29 trofei vinti in, in 31 anni di Milan siamo riusciti, il presidente Berlusconi e io, a portare una squadra, la squadra dove io sono nato, la città dove io sono nato che la Cimonza per la prima volta in 110 anni in Serie A e anche questo per noi è un motivo di grande soddisfazione. Grazie, grazie molto. Grazie Mr. Galliani and congratulations. I will be translating that in a few. Yeah, well, Mr. Galliani, thank the Dubai Sports Council for the effort in promoting football and making it available all over the world. It's been his mission together with President Berlusconi, the main person behind the 29 titles at AC Milan. As for the biggest challenge faced during his career, it was definitely taking Monza back to the Italian Serie A. Hey, congratulations to Adriano for picking up that award. Right, uh, let's get to the art, and it is an art. The art of defending, no less, which has become increasingly challenging in modern day football. It is for this very reason that we here at the Dubai Globe Soccer Awards decided to pay tribute to, well, when you can, do it. The greatest of all time. Balance, composure, control and restraint make up the key elements of defending. But what happens when you add in an attacking element? It's all the ingredients needed to crown the best defender of all time. This one's brought to you by Silver Sand, the Dubai Globe Soccer Awards best defender of all time is... Sergio Ramos. A pivotal figure whenever he's played. Sergio Ramos was there when Spain ended their 44-year wait for a major title by winning Euro 2008. He was there when they claimed their first World Cup and was there in 2012 when they made it three straight tournament wins. He was ever-present when Real Madrid won La Decima and was crucial in their success in Milan, Cardiff and Kiev. The most prolific defender in international football and a decorated career has resulted in a haul of 27 trophies. Ladies and gentlemen, your best defender of all time, Sergio Ramos. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank 
Globe Soccer and the Dubai Sport Council for this award. To be voted best defender of all time is something incredible and very special. This uh, represents the work, effort, and sacrifice during my career. Thanks to Sevilla, Real Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain, and the national team. Thanks to all the coaches and teammates I have had in my career. And of course, to my family for understanding my life and know how to share it along with me, always together. Last but not least, uh, this award values the, the career I have been so far, but there are still so many challenges and dreams to reach. Thank you so much for to be here. Well, you made the effort to say it in English, we'll say it in Spanish. Gracias, Sergio. E felicidades. Es un gran honor tenerte con nosotros esta noche. The Player Career Award serves as a recognition to those who have scaled the highest peaks of the footballing world. Players who are legends of the beautiful game and were focal points in their team's success. Brought to you by the Commercial Bank of Dubai, our first Player Career Award goes to Brazilian World Cup icon, Romario. Romario led Brazil's forward line at USA 94. He scored five goals, was named player of the tournament and world player of the year as the Salico won their fourth World Cup. At club level, he was just as mesmeric, starring for PSV Eindhoven and Barcelona, amongst others. After retiring, Romario parlayed his status as a man of the people into a political career and got elected to the Brazilian Senate, a player who embodies the Yoko Benito spirit, the great Romario. Well, I show your appreciation for Romario! Buenas noches. Para mí es un gran honor It's a great honor de recibir to receive este premio. This prize. Muchas gracias al Th Globo Soccer. Thanks a lot Sport. to Globo Soccer. Y decir que como brasileño, as a Brazilian, estoy muy honrado. I feel so honored to be in this event. To be in this event. Persona. Tan importante with so many important people from the history Muchas of gracias y buenas noches football. A todos. Thank you so much and good night to everyone. Congratulations once again to Mario on winning the Player Career Award. Yeah, congratulations indeed to Romario and we move on to our next Career Award. This one's been generously sponsored by our friends at Abu Dhabi Media. So, we start back in the early 2000s where there were a few rumours, a few murmurs that Star was very much on the rise. Uh, those murmurs grew louder and louder as a 16-year-old arrived on the scene spectacularly. Over the years, he grew and became the shining light both for his club and his national team. Our next career award winner is former England and Manchester United captain Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney's destiny was written in the stars. A wonder strike against Arsenal marked his arrival and he endeared himself to the Manchester United faithful with a debut hat-trick against Fenerbahce. 
Rooney was at the forefront of every United success and became their all-time top scorer with 253 goals. Rooney is also England's record scorer with 53 goals and often carried the weight of an expectant nation. Now transitioning into coaching, Rooney will go down as a generational talent. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for former Manchester United and England captain, Wayne Rooney. Hi. Firstly, I'd just like to say a, a huge thank you to Globe Soccer for giving me this award. And um, it's always a huge honour to win any award, um, whether that's with your team or as an individual award. So um, I'd just like to dedicate it to, to all my teammates. I think it's, it's great, and I can stand here um, on behalf of all my teammates I've had um, at all the clubs I've been at and at international level. So once again, thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. Congratulations one more time to Wayne Rooney. Our next career award is sponsored by Waldorf Astoria Palm and goes to someone who is still flourishing at the highest level. With more than 20 seasons of top flight football behind him. It's none other than Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> A genius who stands apart, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a hero to millions. Strikers are judged by their goals, and not only is Ibrahimovic a scorer, but he's a scorer of the sensational. From the acrobatic to the long range, Zlatan has mastered them all and scored over 500 career goals, which has earned him a highly impressive 34 trophies. He is also Sweden's all-time record goal scorer and was named Swedish Player of the Year a record 12 times. Please welcome on stage Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Paulo Ricky, the career is not finished. I have still to go, eh? <laughs> Relax. So. First of all, I want to thank Global Globe Soccer Award. Thank you very much for this trophy. Very honored. I mean, a player's career is not based on the individual. So all the people that is involved in this, I want to thank them. Thank my family. Uh, without them, nothing is possible. So thank the fans also. And uh, Congrats to all the other winners and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zlatan. And once again, congratulations on winning the Player Carrier Award. Yeah, congratulations to Zlatan. And now we move on to the big one. Now, the fulfillment of putting a smile on the face of any adoring fan is something even the greatest with us here today strive for. Now, this is an award that not just pays tribute to the stars with us here and stars on the pitch, but to you, the fan out there as well. You, whose voice and presence leaves an everlasting mark on this, the beautiful game. With fan recognition being the premise, the best in the world are set to be honoured. Your nominees then for the TikTok Fans Player of the Year are... Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Voting is now closed. The time has come to reveal your winner. Who will be crowned? Benzema, Messi, De Bruyne, Courtois, Salah, Haaland, Lewandowski, Ronaldo. Decided by you, the fans, your 2022 Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Fans Player of the Year is... The TikTok Fans Player of the Year 2022 is... Say that's a popular one. Voted for by millions across social media platforms as well as the Globe Soccer Portal. Your 2022 Globe, Dubai Globe Soccer Awards Fan Player of the Year is a goal scorer, a goal creator, and the focal point of one of the most successful Liverpool teams in all history. He is Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah, congratulations. You're a two-time PFA Player of the Year, a two-time Football Writers Player of the Year. You're named three times part of the PFA Team of the Year. You're also three-time winner of the Golden Boot in the Premier League. How does it feel for you to be recognized by those who matter the most, the fans? Well, you guys put more pressure on me now, but I think uh, it's always great. The most important part of the fo is, um, football is the fans. So you win that award, voted by fans, is uh, something great. So I'm so something grateful for. Well, you also broke the record with the highest, uh, fastest hat trick in the Champions League. You're now also the eighth all-time scorer with Liverpool. How much attention do you put on breaking records? Well, too much, honestly. Like I'm always focused to to help the team to win games and trophy. That's the most important thing. But somehow also I keep looking for that because something motiv motivates me all the time and makes me want to give more. Hamad Salah, I'll ask you a question in Arabic. You can see the world in Arabic and the best player in the history. What is your goal for each person and for each person who is in the world in Arabic? Arabic or English? Arabic. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that إن أي حد طالما أنا عملت كده يبقى أي حد يقدر يعمل كده أنا تقريبا بقالي 11 سنة أو 12 سنة في أوروبا مفيش فرق كبير بيننا وبينهم في التالنت الفرق الوحيد اللي هو مانتلي إن هم عندهم حاجات إحنا مش عندنا أو دارسين حاجات إحنا مش عارفينها بس نصيحتي أنا طالما أنا عملت كده أنتوا تقدروا تعملوا كده بس لازم لازم تكون جاهز عشان أنت هتقابل حاجات مش هتبقى سهلة عليك هتقابل حاجات تبقى صعبة عليك you have to go out of your comfort zone. Can I say this part in English? Of course. So you have to be out of your comfort zone. You have to sacrifice everything. I dedicate all my life for football. I'm always giving everything for football. And I will be. Like I sacrifice my time with the family, with going to the gym, the food, everything. I'm always dedicate everything for football. So everyone in the Middle East can do it. But you have to be ready. You have to be prepared. prepared. It's not going to be comfortable. So, and the last thing I would say, like this award is very special for me because I received it in the Arab land and I celebrate it with the, um, my people. So, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Muhammad Salah, so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Muhammad, we're going to ask you to stay with us here. If we can ask you to stay with us here, Matley, over to you. We'd like to call up our winners to capture what has been a fascinating evening. Indeed. OK, joining us now are career award winners. Let's bring up the former England and Manchester United captain, Wayne Rooney.
Brazilian World Cup winner, Romario. As you can see, the faces are being adorned on the Burj Khalifa. Next up, it is, of course, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. The best defender of all time, Sergio Ramos. And of course, our fans player still with us here on stage this year, Mohamed Salah. A very big thank you to His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Chairman of the Dubai Sports Council, and His Excellency Matar Al Tayyar for joining us on this wonderful evening. Yeah, I'm sure you'll all agree it's been a magical evening. It's been an enchanting city as always, and a galaxy of stars were celebrated here. From the record breakers to the history makers, the 17th annual Dubai International Sports Conference and the 13th edition of the Dubai Globe Soccer Awards has been an evening to remember. From all of us here at Dubai Globe Soccer, I'm Natalie Mamo. Thank you. Good night. Wa tasbahu ala alf khair. Cheers, Nuts. Can we take a picture together and then with you? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm Lebanese. Ah, okay. 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 I speak a lot of languages. I wanted yeah. to say something in Swedish, but it's hard. No, it's hard. It's very hard. I mean, German. Uh, What's up? Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Yeah. I'll see you later. Thank you.